when you get one of these engines out of the box, they claim to run without doing anything, and that is true to some extent, but if you don't do anything to your engine, don't look it over, you will have some issues down the road. So, in this video, I will be showing you the modifications that you absolutely need to take to ensure that your engine is ready to rip. Now the first issue, or more or less mod that you need to do, is to check for uh, cylinder defects, but before we do that, we're going to look to check to see if we have any ring snag. Now before we take the top of the cylinder off, uh, I highly recommend turning the engine over at least once. Uh, it'll be pretty hard if you don't remove your spark plug. Take note if it feels as if the piston binds at any given point. So I have taken the cylinder head off and now to remove the cylinder. Now there's the ports, the intake port, and then the exhaust port. So you're going to check to see if there's any like sharp edges or defects that you can see and you definitely will see them. Now after you have uh, filed your engine, even if you haven't, um, I highly recommend taking a paper towel and just wiping down the inside of the cylinder. You're going to want to remove the piston rings, you're going to want to take them off, and you're going to prep them. Now that we have uh, ridden the cylinder of all defects and burrs, and we have made sure that the rings are completely prepped and ready, so they will not snag, but they will also break in well, it's time to go on to uh, issue number two, which is magneto centering. We're going to remove this cover here. Alright, now that we have the cover off, we can see that the magnet is actually touching the magneto on the bottom here. And we want to uh, center it so the uh, gap on the top is equal to the gap on the bottom. We need to loosen these four screws. Now that we have loosened all four screws, now we just need to center it. Um, and you can do this uh, with your hands, or you can get a piece of paper and wedge it in between both of these just so they don't touch. So that's just one thing that you have to address. I mean, if you don't, this entire system will just shred itself. Another thing with these magnetos is that there are three wires. The real important thing is this white wire. It's actually not important at all, and it's just best to cut it off. The reason I cut it off is because these two wires go to the CDI, which power the spark plug, while as this white one just stays there looking ugly. Now that we have the magneto centered, uh, we can move on to our third and arguably one of the most important parts of these engines, lubrication. So... First off, we need to take the clutch cover off, and we need to take this uh, sprocket cover off. Now that we have the clutch cover removed, these are the two bevel gears, and you're going to need to lubricate these bad boys. For these types of things, I just use slick oleum, light or medium grade grease. Make sure you don't put a absolute ton on there, but... Uh, put a generous amount. All right, so I took the sprocket cover off and this is the bucking bar. You're gonna wanna put grease around in here. This also comes out, so it makes it a little bit easier. Put some down in there and just, but then you're gonna want to take this little pin out. There's gonna be a bearing that'll fall out and you're gonna lubricate this as well. Now that everything is all lubed did -did up, let's talk about spark plugs. Now, these can actually lead to catastrophic failures in these engines. Um, now, these are Z4 from Jingying. Uh, these absolutely suck. 
uh, they run too hot, too cold, I don't know. It seems like literally all of these uh, Chinese plugs that come with these bikes all run like crap. So um, go and get yourself an NGK plug. It, they're literally like three, four dollars. Um, the BP6HS, BR6HS, and the B6HS plugs all run amazing and definitely worth it. Now before we get into the one of the largest issues with these bikes, um, let's talk about exhausts. Now before we get into the last issue with these engines, let's talk about exhausts. Now this is the stock exhaust that these engine kits come with, and it sucks. Here's why. If you're looking for top speed, this is not the exhaust for you. If you're looking for reliability, nada. The only thing that this pipe offers is quietness. Literally it. If you use this thing, it is it generates way too much resistance uh, for the exhaust ga uh, gaskets to handle. So it'll destroy, run through exhaust gaskets. Um, but then if you try modifying them... Uh, then they'll blow head gaskets. So there really is no median to these. It's really a big pain in the butt. So, um, with that being said, what exhaust do you get? Um, there's various ones on the market, but the two best for reliability, not so much power, but reliability, availability, and price range, I do have to say will be the MZ65 knockoff pipes um, as well as the Flex Poo Poo pipe. Now yes, haha <laughs> Poo Poo, but both of these offer amazing value especially for how budget friendly these pipes are. If you don't know what a squish gap is, pretty much this is the cylinder, this is the head. The piston needs to go to the top of the cylinder without hitting the top of the cylinder head. The clearance between the piston at top dead center and the top of the, the cylinder head is called your squish gap. That squish gap needs to be between 0.5 and 1 millimeter. If it's outside those, it'll run terrible. Now with these engines, even though they're cheap and whatnot, they should still run out of the box. However, that was not the case because these engines had three millimeter squish gaps and that is trash. Now let me explain why that's bad. Compression is a key factor in an engine and running right and whatever. The squish gap and compression go hand in hand so if you have a smaller squish gap, you'll have more compression. If you have a larger squish gap, you'll have less compression. And because the squish gap on these engines were so large, they didn't have any compression. And you need a minimum of about 60 PSI of compression for an engine like this to even run. Whereas these out of the box did not even have 20 PSI. And yes, I did test it. First thing I did before even touching these. But I was able to fix this. And here's what I did. It's called decking a cylinder. And if you're not familiar with that, there you take the top of the cylinder and you just start taking material off the top. And that brings the cylinder head closer to the piston and decreases that squish gap volume. That's, I can't really explain it any better than that. 